Hello everyone, my name is Li Tao. Here I'm going to introduce our work, Joint Multiscale Tone Mapping and Denoising for HDR Image Enhancement. This work is done by Li Tao Hu from Purdue University, Huai Jin Chen from Sense Brain, and Jen Alabak from Purdue University. In a typical cell phone camera's finishing pipeline, the denoised raw image will go through steps including demosaicing, white balancing, chroma denoise, lens shading and color corrections, as well as local and global tone mapping. Such pipeline is adequate for most scenarios, but in some special cases, such as an under-display camera, it will not work so well. This is because photos taken by these under-display cameras often suffer from lower signal-to-noise ratio and commonly used image denoisers such as burst denoising might not be enough to remove this noise completely. Therefore, we propose to perform both local and global tone mapping, as well as removing the remaining noise from previous steps with a single unified model. The bottom figure shows how our joint framework can be used to improve the upper finish pipeline. This is an overview for our joint image enhancement framework. The upper portion of the figure shows a high-level workflow of our framework, while the lower portion of the figure shows more details of the tone mapping and denoising modules. Now let's take a closer look at the different components of this joint framework. Our joint framework consists of five major steps. The first step is extracting overlapping Im image patches. The step size for extracting image patches is half of the patch size in our case. And it is 24, 224 by 224 for patch size and 112 for step size both horizontally and vertically. Then for each extracted image patch, the second step is to compute its Laplacian pyramid. In our framework, we use four Laplacian layers, and, and then we pass each Laplacian layer to their corresponding tone mapping module and denoising module. Note that for the base layer, which is the one with the smallest size, we don't use a denoising module, since the, most of the high frequency noise has been separated into the upper layers in the Laplacian pyramid, we think that denoising at the base layer would not be necessary. After the layer-wise tone mapping and denoising, we then reconstruct the output image patches from the four output Laplacian layers. And finally, we combine all the overlapping patches to form a final output image. Note that at the final step, we used a raised cosine window to smooth out the overlapping regions of all the neighboring patches to produce a more naturally looking final output. Here's a closer look to the model structures of our tone mapping and denoising modules. On the left, there is our tone mapping modules, which is a modified version of the CSRNet, and is, it is trained from scratch. The module takes a three-layer RGB image as input and produce, produces a three-layer RGB output. The output would then be passed to our deep DZT denoising modules directly. On the right, there is our DCT denoising module. It is designed based on the traditional DCT local patch denoising algorithm. In that, in the traditional DCT denoising algorithm, a preset threshold is usually selected to zero out DCT coefficients below the threshold in order to create sparsity in the DCT domain. However, the operation is not differentiable and thus is not suitable for our learning-based framework. Therefore, we use a set of denoising multipliers estimated by a five-layer convolutional neural network as the reweighting map to denoise the DCT coefficients. This allows for more flexibility in the denoising network and enables end-to-end -end training for our network. In, in this reweighting map, a value close to zero is equivalent to the case where the corresponding DCT coefficient is below the threshold, while a value close to one is equivalent to the case where the DCT coefficient is above the threshold. Our de DCT denoising process can be represented by the equation shown near the bottom of the slides. 
where C noisy represents the DCT coefficients of the noisy input image patch, while C denoised represents the, the DCT coefficients of the denoised output image patch. In our experiments, we trained our model with three consecutive training phases. The first training phases, namely the tone mapping training phase, focuses on pre-training the tone mapping net and networks. In this phase, the denoising module will be temporarily moved out of the, out the joint framework, meaning that each layer in the pyramid will only go through a tone mapping network. The loss function for this phase is computed according to equations shown as on the slide, which computes the sum of the L1 distances between the model's output Laplacian layers and the corresponding Laplacian layers of the final ground truth image patch. The second training phase, namely the denoising phase, focuses on pre-training the denoising networks. In this phase, the denoising modules are added back to the joint framework while the pre-trained tone mapping networks are fixed. The loss function for this phase is computed according to the three equations shown on the slide, which is very similar to phase one training loss functions. But we, but we replace the L1 loss for L3 base layer with a denoising loss term. This denoising loss term measures the L1 distance between the, the denoised output patch and the intermediate ground truth image patch. And finally, the last training phase, namely the joint training phase, trains both the tone mapping networks and the denoising modules all together. The loss function for this phase is simply an L1 loss computed between the reconstructed final output and the final ground truth image patch. Here are the detailed training settings for the three training phases for our joint framework. We train the model for 500 epochs during the first and the second phase, and 1000 epochs during the joint training phase. And we empirically chose the hyperparameters for the loss functions. As for the dataset, we use the Google HDR Plus dataset, as it provides both the merged intermediate ground truth image and the final ground truth image for computing our loss functions. The merged intermediate ground truth image is obtained by underexposed burst denoising, and the final ground truth image is the output from the HDR Plus finishing pipeline. Note that as a data preprocessing step, we use SIFT to crop the input and the intermediate ground truth so that they match the final ground truth image. In our experiment, we've compared our model to several other state-of-the-art image enhancement methods and denoising methods. We've also investigated the effect of the ordering of the tone mapping operators and the denoising operators in the joint framework. And in the table, DFTL represents denoising first and tone mapping last, while TFDL represents the opposite ordering. Both our models outperforms the others based on the results in the table, and our outputs are much better than the others in terms of both the tone mapping quality and denoising quality. We also tested our model on the LOL dataset and the SEIE dataset. The advantage of our model is less obvious here because the input image in this dataset are mostly noise-free. Finally, we also compared all these models qualitatively on a node reference dataset called LIME, and we can see that the outputs from our model are much, has much better tone mapping quality and color accuracy compared to the others. In this paper, we have proposed a composite image enhancement model that jointly performs image tone mapping and denoising in a multi-scale framework. Our model outperforms the others both quantitatively and qualitatively. Our experiments on the ordering of the tone mapping operators and the denoising operators demonstrated that applying tone mapping before the denoising yields slightly better results in such a joint framework. And that wraps up my presentation for today. Thank you for listening.